Hello, Hello Larry. All right. Yeah. Has your man changed to Flory yet? Thank you. Thank you. Hello, it's me, Julian, better known as the Joan Collins Fan Club. Do you like my outfit? It's rather camp, isn't it? I went into the shop this morning. I said, um, could I try the outfit on in the window? He said, no, you'll have to use the dressing room like everybody else. <laughs> now then, I'm strangely drawn to this lady down here. What's your name? Sandra. Sandra, and where are you from? Southampton. Southampton, that's very lovely. And who, who are you married to, Ken? Yes. Hello, Ken, very nice to see you. What have you bought to trade? A dinosaur. A dinosaur, let me have a look. <laughs> Heavens, the things they bring on this show. <laughs> what do you call a dinosaur with one eye? Do you think you saw us? <laughs> <laughs> now, what have you got here? Take It's not an Indian, is it? Those curries are very hot. No wonder Gandhi wore a nappy. Now then. <laughs> Hello, what's your name? Alison. Alison, you had to think about that then for a moment, didn't you? And don't pick your nose, we just swept up. Please, please. Anyway, Teddy looks happy sitting on your lap there, doesn't he? Now then, what team do you support? I don't support any. Don't you really? Do what kind of sport do you like? Oh, I like Joan Collins. Do you really? Well, that, I think that could be the end of the sketch tonight. <laughs> Well, that's all we've got time for tonight on Trick or Cheat. So me and, me and Tony are just going to go and lie down in a cold, dark room. So until next week, I thank you. This is indeed a very exciting moment for me. Probably the culmination of my years in the television business because I've come to the home of my hero. Now you can probably guess just whose home it is. Of course, Eddie the Eagle Edwards. Eddie, are you there? Eddie, hello, Eddie. Oh! Oh, there. oh, I'm not a giant, Annika. <laughs> oh, my hands. Oh, God, that's cold. Oh, I'm sorry about that, yeah, but my hands are usually the last thing to thaw out. <laughs> well, almost the last thing. <laughs> Can I take a seat? Yeah, have a seat, Annika. Thank you very much. Oh, oh, oh I'm there, I'm there. I'm right. Great. I must ask you now about this in incredible expedition. You're Pretty impressive, isn't it, Annika? Why are you doing it? Well, as you know, they've stopped me from doing a link bit competition, and to be perfectly honest with you, I'm fed up with jumping. Fed up. What made you jump in the first place? Oh, I never made first place. Huh? <laughs> I was a close last, Annika. <laughs> the old G-force on the face, I think, the G-force. What I actually meant is, what made you jump? Oh, what makes me jump? Well, yes. it's the old eagle technique, you see. It's oh, a bit yeah. of a secret. I'll tell you what makes me jump. It's when uh, people walk up to me and go, BOOM! Ah! Little <laughs> 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 lady joked that. <laughs> Back to the expedition, I think, Eddie. You're actually going to be retracing the, the steps of the great um, Captain Scott. That's right, Have you Scott. been to the poll before? Uh, only during the last elections, Annika. <laughs> Are you going alone or will you be taking a team? No, I will be going alone. Scott took Captain Ulster with him, you see. Oh, uh, old Titus. Well, he was a bit mean, but I wouldn't have called him that. <laughs> <laughs> no, you see, that's why, you see, I've been doing the old research into it all, and I've managed to lower my body temperature, so it acclimatises it to the sub-zero temperature. Oh, this is a scoop. This is fascinating. So, How did you actually start that? Well, I started by turning off one of the bars on the electric fire. Oh, right. <laughs> and, and then what did you do? And then, and then I started taking ice in my lager. <laughs> and then I was ready to move on a stage. Ah, oh, this is when you went to Greenland. To Tesco's. Yeah. I used to dangle my hands in with the ice cream and the vegetables. Oh, <laughs> frozen peas. Well, yes, depending on how many lagers I'd had, really. I say it must have been pretty nippy in there. I tell you, me, minus two. Minus two? Well, that's not very cold. Who's talking about the temperature? <laughs> It's 25 below. Oh, below zero? No, just below. <laughs> anyway, listen, I can't hang around here. Oh, I've got to get you on my way, because it's a long way, isn't it, to the South Pole? Fair old slap. You mean you're actually leaving right now? Yes, I am, yep, I'm leaving right now. Tell me something. I bet you didn't know, actually, what I do instead of the compasses, because they don't work down there, do they? Oh! Thought of that. How'd you get home again, then? I'll show you. I'll show you what I got, Annika. It's me ball. 
<laughs> Here it is, look. That is so cool. <laughs> impressed, aren't you? <laughs> Hold on impressed. to me. Hold on to me. I'm there. <laughs> now you hold one end, right? And when I and when I get to the South Pole, I'll give it a couple of tugs, right? And you'll know I'm there then, won't you? Hey? Bye-bye then, Anna girl. Bye-bye, everyone. It's enormous! It is enormous. It's rough, did you see? <laughs> We really do wish him luck, ladies and gentlemen. What a trip. No, good. Anagar, I can't go. The council, they've forgotten to grit the pavements. It's too early slippery out there. once again to another thrilling edition of the Small Daniel Study Show. Tonight, I'm going to show you how to do some clever tricks with some brown bags. The first trick, I take one empty brown bag, like so, and one bottle. I place the bottle inside the bag. Now then, I say the magic words, Ali Bongo, I owe you everything, and hey, presto, the bottle has disappeared. <laughs> I can see you're totally unimpressed with this trick, so am I. So, Let's throw it away and do another trick. Talking of old bags, here's the lovely Debbie with two new bags. Hello, Debbie. Say hello, Small. Hello, Small. Oh, give me one bag, please, Debbie. Now, you place your bag over your head like so, and I will place the other bag over my head. Oh, how romantic. Not now, Debbie. Later. <laughs> roll, roll, please. And hey, presto. Hello, my dearies. I got me singing that on the day. If you're looking into naked field, you'll see your words are there. With some broken tricks for fingers and some bits of straw for air. Now my clothes are really tatty, and Aunt Sally says I smell. But if she had stood in what I've stood in, <laughs> she would smell as well. <laughs> the crow man makes the scarecrow just it made me what I am. As well as me, there's Riven in Sweden, and also Warty Yam. We're supposed to scare the dicky birds because they are a pest. But it's hard to be that nasty With a robin in your chair Oh, we shuffle to the left And we shuffle to the right And we all protect the plants Oh, we're ever so friendly Especially out of sight When we do in the scarecrow dance <laughs> 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 With scaring birds gets boring do other work instead And every time I change my job I also change me head yeah. But although they may look different You can always tell it's me Cause every head likes bits of cake And endless cups of tea Why? <laughs> oh, we shuffle to the left And we shuffle to the right And we all protect the plants Oh, we're so friendly, especially out of sight when we're doing the scarecrow dance. Oh, 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 oh.
The Watazuli tribe, tribe untouched by progress. Isolated from the emotional and cultural advances of our time, a people who have never had the benefit of even the most basic education. So on our earth do they fill their stagnant, naive, wretched lives? Dearest darlings, lovers, welcome to another edition of Dilemmas with Auntie Claire. Well, look at all the letters I've got tonight. I've got two big bundles. <laughs> but that's enough about my problems. But, and I've got a very big butt, as you can see. <laughs> I'm, I'm very excited tonight because I hope to be answering some of your phone calls. So let's see this phone ring. But first, some letters. Now, <laughs> our first letter comes from Worried of Whopping. Dear Claire, my wife smokes in bed. Does she love it? Are you sure it's not just the steam from the tea's made? <laughs> he says, my wife smokes in bed. And I'm very, very wide because we've got a water bed. Do you think it's dangerous? Well, of course, lovey, it's very dangerous to smoke in a water bed, lovey. I knew a couple who did. There was a terrible fire and they were both poached to death. <laughs> here's, here's a letter from a woman in Derbyshire. Dear Auntie Claire, I'm having terrible trouble with my boobs. What can I do? Well, Adrena, keep your mouth shut. No one will notice, will they, lovey? Will they? <laughs> Now, here's, an, here's another letter from Confused of Cornwall. Dear Claire, when I came home from work the other day, I found my husband underneath the bed. Is there anything wrong? No, lovey. Your husband's just being a little potty. <laughs> isn't he? Isn't he, lovey? Isn't he? Now... <laughs> continuing... Continuing with another letter. Here's one from Trouble of Tottenham. She writes... Dear Claire, my husband is so amorous, he won't leave me alone. He wants to make love all the time. In the kitchen, in the living room, in the car, everywhere. Please, can you help me? P.S. Please excuse the shaky handwriting. <laughs> well, of course, lovey, it's, it's not unusual to make love everywhere. In fact, my husband likes making love in the car as well. The only trouble is, it's when I'm driving. <laughs> here's, a, here's a problem I sympathise with. This young man tells me that he's troubled by ugly and repulsive spots. Well, have you ever thought of moving away from Southampton? Have you, love it? Have you? <laughs> and finally, finally, here's a sad letter. Dear Claire, my hubby's walked out on me, and just for spite, he took all my bras with him. What can I do? Well, love it, sue him for non-support. I would, I would. Well, that's... Wait a moment, I think that's our first caller. Our, our first... I can't seem to reach the phone. Huh? <laughs> Excuse me, 
Heatherington, madam. Yes, what is it, Heatherington? The Brussels man is here. Well, tell him it's too late. We've finished dinner. No, no, no. The dick from Belgium. Monsieur <laughs> Farrell. He's not a dick, Heatherington. He's a detective. Obviously, you have yet to see him, madam. Oh, just show him in, Heatherington. Yes, madam. Monsieur Poirot. Oh, yes. Oh, Monsieur How good of you to come. Mm, madame. May I take your coat, sir? Oh, thank you very much. Yes, what a shocking and horrible thing this is. Yes, it is. <laughs> take it off and burn it, too. It is, my... I do have the butler did it. Uh, Monsieur Poirot, let me introduce you to everybody. I don't think you've met Priscilla Gore Worthington. Yes, we share the same taste in coffee. Madam, <laughs> And uh, I don't think you know what's what. Are you kidding? I've known what's what ever since the bicycle shed at school, you know. No, 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 I meant the captain here. Neville, what's what. Pleased to meet you, Poirot. Ah, uh, sir. <laughs> I do hope you're going to clear up this ghastly mess. Oh, I don't know. In the correct light, she could look quite attractive. <laughs> uh, and this is the doctor, Hugh Maitland. Ah. Him, Inspector. No, but every time I meet a doctor, I always go, ah! <laughs> well, Inspector, do sit down. Make yourself comfortable. Thank you. <laughs> now then, perhaps one of you would kindly tell me what has happened here last night. Well, the gardener was knocking on the door about 11 o'clock, which was rather embarrassing because the chauffeur was still yes, there. Yes, yes, yes. I think they have had enough. Uh, speak for yourself, old boy. Carry on, my dear. Well, I Listen, to... I am trying to discern what has happened here last night. Lady Donnington, please tell me. Well, Inspector, as you can see, my house is to go And last night, I, I went into the library at about 10.30, and my husband was in his usual chair, but there was something different about him. I looked. There were three bullet holes in his chest, a rope around his neck, a ten-inch dagger plunged into his heart, and he had an axe. Embedded in his head. How the dare must do my chevalier? It was suicide. <laughs> ridiculous, Poirot. His lordship was obviously murdered. But surely you don't suspect one of us. Of course. Well, I am innocent. Oh. Ah, no. <laughs> Merde, mere, how can you say you are innocent? You have been in more bedrooms than the Gideon Bible. There is obviously a plot going on here. Not much of a plot, I grant you, but it's the best we can do. Let me think for one moment. Now then, mademoiselle, a word in your luggage, please. I'm particularly worried for your safety, madame, mademoiselle. I think I should spend the night with you. Oh, gosh, I wish I'd known. I've already got the window cleaner coming round. <coughs> Chanel, Chanel. But never mind, you still need protection. Can you use a 38? Well, not really. I'm a 34 and that's a bit of a push. I'm not talking about your dress size, I'm talking about a gun. A gun? A gun. Quick. Stick this into the top of your stocking. But what about you? All right, then. The bit of my other My E.I. clicking. <laughs> ah! Just as I thought, you were listening at the girl. Never! How can you tell? You have got a key sticking out of your left ear. <laughs> We're all a bit keyed up. Oh, with jokes like that, I do have the butler did it. All right, then. I admit it. I did it. I killed his lordship. He was a dreadful man. He would pay me a pittance and treat me like a dog. So I shot him. What about the knife? No, you can keep it. No, who is responsible for plunging the digger in his heart? I am. His lordship caught me playing doctors and nurses with his wife and threatened to expose me. This will never stand up in court, monsieur. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> All right, what about the robe? That was mine. I was his only living blood relative, but he still intended cutting off my endowment. And are you well endowed, monsieur? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what about the axing? Yes, pretty desperate, isn't it? But it's the best we can do with lines like this. <laughs> the axing? He had an axe embedded in his head. That was me. You see, I had refused his advances. Why suddenly so particular, mademoiselle? Well, he wouldn't take no for an answer, so I hit him with the axe. You give him the chop. <laughs> that is the case of it. So, what now, Inspector? Do we call the police? No, madame. You are all free to go. But, but why? why? 
Because the actors in the power of mysteries are always getting away with murder. <laughs> We're working every night of the year Now we've been thinking As we've been drinking You had another pint of bit of beer For years in pubs we were busting a gut To rock the music put us on the map But now we're stuck in a musical rut Doing non-stop cockney rhyming pony and tram Alright! Well we've had enough of this he said stuff We've had enough of London town we're feeling great in a country estate It's thumbs down to knees up mother brown We made it up to here with all the rabbit Rabbit, 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 rabbit. Nowadays we eat your dear The market is my food up It's better in Bermuda for a cockney millionaire What chance, my Here we go, Dave It goes up here, Jazzy One more We fold it flash, eat it pies and mash But in fact the jelly deals really stank now we've a forest in the islands, we like the Channel Islands. My old man says, follow the bank. We're sick of knocking them in the old Cairo. Don't want to see the full of bush again, though we're not sophisticated. We're sick of being rated as a musical dirty then. All right. To all the plunkers throughout the land, still hoping for a win on the pool. It's a much game, don't you understand? Prevailing on the GGs, it's for horses and bulls. How's your horses going for A? Instead, get a drummer in a ball fire and then forget to shave. Ooh, With a bit of syncopation ooh, 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 ooh. and a bit of comedy chat, 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 chat. chat. <laughs> One and another. Watch you listen to me, mother. Make a fortune as another chance and day. Watch as my son, Christy. Nicky! <laughs>